ever thought about what the truth is about the devil and Satan? You listen to preachers, many of them will tell you they see the devil, they see Satan, they see demons, and that they have the power to deal with these supernatural beings. If they give out a radiant light every step they make into a room that destroys these demons. You know, the subject of the devil has suffered from a history of presuppositions which are not in accord with what the truth of the scriptures are. If we look at the scriptural quotes we can ascertain the basis for the belief that what the Bible refers to as devil or Satan is actually sin in the flesh or those who manifest this flesh. I think the, the key verse that we need to look at is Hebrews 2.14. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that hath power of death, that is, the devil. When it says through death he might destroy him that hath power over death, that's Jesus, through his death, he was to destroy him that had power of death, and that's the devil. If you have a Greek concordance or uh, lexicon, you can see what that uh, word devil is. It's diab uh, diabolon, and it means adversary. And I think we pretty much can figure out who Jesus' adversary was in that first century. And they had the power of death, which was the law, which I hope to prove to you throughout this video. Some people say the devil is, is a wicked fallen angel. Angels that sin, which I don't believe angels can sin. I think it's impossible for angels to sin, and I think it's blasphemous to say that they do, or they did. Taking on the flesh and blood would be a strange way to battle a powerful, immortal angel. The scriptures tell us he took not on him the nature of angels. but he was a partaker of flesh and blood. Why was the devil destroyed with the death of Jesus? Doesn't the verse say that the devil is now dead? The adversary that it's talking about in the scripture is dead and he's not out actively deceiving souls. You know, the popular idea of the devil is inconsistent and, and, it, and you know, these people are unable to answer the thoughts put forth by the writers of Hebrews. Hebrews 2.14 gives us several clues to identify the real devil. Jesus took on the human nature to overcome the adversary, the devil. And Jesus destroyed him that had power of death. The scripture is telling us that the adversary, the devil, had the power of death. If we 
uh, compare Hebrews 2.14 with other scriptures, we find uh, that what Christ did in his death by destroying the devil is compared to the destruction of sin. Hebrews 9.26 For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Sounds a lot like Hebrews 2.14. In 1 Corinthians 15.3 For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Hebrews 2.14 By his death he destroyed sin. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24. Who his own self bare our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye are healed. 1 John 3, 5 And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. If we compare uh, that to 1 John 3, 8 He that committeth sin is of the devil, is of the adversary. For the devil adversary sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God has manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil, the works of the adversary. Sin in the flesh is is the principle here. Romans 8, 3 For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. There's other scriptures showing that the devil which has power of death is actually sin or sin manifested in the flesh in the form of evil humans, not some supernatural being. Romans 5.12 Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, by one man sin entered into the world, not by some supernatural being, but by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Sin was responsible for death. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Romans 5.21 That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Corinthians 15.21 For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. You got to remember that through one man came sin. For since by man came death, sin and death, but by man came also the resurrection of the dead. First Corinthians fifteen fifty six: The sting of death is sin. 
and the strength of that sin is the law. Who was holding the people under the law? It was the adversary. It was the devil. We know who the adversary in that first century that this, these scriptures are talking about. We know who that was. 